Welcome back. We're going to go to our next committee, which is Lake Whatcom and Natural Resources. The chair of that committee is Dan Hamill. Thank you. I'm joined this afternoon by Council Members Knutson and Borneman. I have an update from the Lake Whatcom Policy Group. This was a, um, a meeting that occurred on July 17th. Um, that, that Lake Whatcom Policy Group has um, uh, condensed its uh, amount of meetings from uh, about 11 to 4. And so the meetings are much longer. So the report that I have. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's much longer. I'm going to try to be brief and just, uh, go through the main uh, salient points. Um, we discussed a number of items on July 17th, including the Whatcom County Flood Control District, a process for reviewing revenue options. Um, I'm going to cover a few programs here. The River and Flood Program administers the Comprehensive Flood Hazard Management Plan. Um, that's the long-term comprehensive plan for river management and includes capital projects that integrate flood hazard reduction, salmon restoration, and agricultural viability for the lower Nooksack Basin. We also covered the Natural Resources Division, which oversees uh, focus zones uh, for Drayton Harbor, Birch Bay, and Portage Bay. The division is also involved in water rights and watershed planning, salmon recovery, and, and the Aquatic Invasive Species Program. Third division is the Stormwater and National Pollution Discharge Elimination or NP, a System or NPDES Program. This includes inspection, repair, and reporting for stormwater management activities required under NPDES stormwater permit. A 2014 Water Action Plan was created in response to growing concerns about countywide water issues. The salient components of that plan are creation of a formal N PDES program uh, funded by road and uh, flood funds. And I, I do want to indicate that this, th these are county items, but because the Lake, Lake Whatcom is our drinking water source, that we're, we're covering these items here in the Lake Whatcom Policy Group. Uh, it also includes an enhanced pollution identification and uh, correction program that monitors um, water quality affecting shellfish, shellfish beds. Lake Whatcom phosphorus reduction commitments to meet city and county goals of achieving the TMDL or total maximum daily load within 50 years and update of the comprehensive flood control or flood ha hazard uh, management plan. Um, so the flood control zone district is a separate um, district created in 1992. The fund can be used for a wide range of water quality and, and resource investments. Current spending is depleting the, res the reserve which will be gone sometime in 2018. Four options for level of service um, pursuant to this were being evaluated. I'll just briefly touch on these. Level of service one basically would reduce uh, a rural water quality program, cease AIS con and, and, and cease AIS contributions. Some levies would no longer be eligible for Army Corps of Engineers funding. Levies have to be maintained to an Army Corps of Engineer level uh, to receive um, funding fr uh, from the Corps. <clears throat> level two um, would require $1.3 million um, to um, basically maintain current um, um, level of or current level of service, roughly speaking, level of uh, service three maintains current spending and adds funds to achieve current stated commitments. That would require 1.7 million dollars. Um, the levies would remain in compliance in this model for the Army Corps program, and level four would uh, allow achievement of current commit commitments plus additional. Spending for the Lake Whatcom program, this would require uh, filling a funding gap of $2 million. This would allow the county to match the city's funding levels for the uh, HIP program, which is the home improvement um, program for uh, homeowners at $400,000 and will also provide uh, funding for additional uh, small residential area uh, public stormwater retrofit um, projects. The HIP program is a, uh, is a, um, a mitigating program to reduce phosphorus entering the lake and other uh, contaminants. Options for increasing revenues include an increase in the flood tax to achieve a level of service three. Taxes would uh, be raised to levels that would re result in an additional $20 per year for a $300,000 home. Um, also, if, uh, for example, in 2009 and 2010, a Lake Whatcom surcharge was considered at a fee uh, set at $60 per property per property per year, this would bring in, in about $400,000 for work in the Lake Whatcom Basin. And that would be for uh, Lake Whatcom watershed homes only. County Council uh, will be the decision maker um, on this funding and identifying projects with the highest spending priority. Uh, we also looked at Lake Whatcom uh, program area updates. I just want to touch on a few of these quickly. Stormwater um, City and County 2017 capital projects. The city is working on two projects in 2017, one at East North Street and the other at East Oregon Street. These projects combined will treat about 40 acres. The county is wrapping up projects at Academy Road and Cedar Hills, a major project planned for Agate Bay. 
has encountered legal issues and is being postponed until 2018. And in 2019, some stro stormwater control projects may occur in conjunction with Southern Valley. We did discuss a land use um, item at Wildwood Resort. Um, in 2009, Wildwood had proposed to do some mitigation at their property by removing campsites near the lake, um, removing an, an old um, um, shoreline barrier. But in, in 2017, the proposal is different. It adds moorage for speed or for motorboats and moorage for jet skis. Impervious surface um, um, added, uh, is added to the proposal. Um, this has just been submitted, so this is nowhere in, in approval or not approval. It's just been submitted to the county. And I want to make uh, just point out that we have no authority over Wildwood. That's on the south end of Lake Wacom, but because it's the drinking water source for 100,000 people, then we bring it up in this policy group. We also talked about monitoring and data tributary and lake uh, monitoring programs administered by the Lake Whatcom program data team it includes the annual Lake Whatcom monitoring program, hydro hydrological model analysis, and then the tributary monitoring program. This is done through the Western Washington Univer University Institute for Watershed Studies. Um, and the 2015 and 2016 reports on the, on the Western uh, Water Studies website. So I'd encourage people, if you're interested in uh, understanding what that means, uh, there's some really good data there. Aquatic invasive species year to date. Uh, four check stations are open in 2017, including a new station at Sudden Valley that is staffed on weekends. Permit sales and inspections are ahead of July last year to date. 4,600, I'm sorry, 4,763 permits have been sold. Uh, and over 7,200 inspections have been completed. This program has intercepted a number of high-risk boats this year. A boat from Texas that had been launched in the lake infested with zebra mussels, had water in its ballast tank, and had to be fully decontaminated. Another boat from Wisconsin was observed with zebra mussel shells in a sea strainer and also received a full decontamination. And some kayaks from infested areas with mussel shells have also been intercepted and decontaminated. We also discussed, discussed the administration of the TMDL implementation plan. Um, meeting the TMDL milestones will be a condition of the MPDES permit. Um, we have one last meeting for this policy group this year, and that's going to be on October 16th uh, at 3 p.m. at the fireplace room, and that's at the Municipal Court Building, 625 Halleck Street. I would encourage anyone who's interested in, in Lake uh, Wacom issues to attend. We will be reviewing the AIS, or the Aquatic Invasive Species Annual Program Review, um, the review of the, um, the HIP program, land acquisition, and, and several other items um, on October 16th. So please attend if you are interested at 3 p.m. Uh, I have no further, um, except Michael. Michael. <clears throat> yeah, first, I, I'd like to apologize uh, that, that through my scheduling, I think our first committee went long. I don't want you to be rushed um, because this was a much longer report than yeah. usual, and, I, and I, I, I think you needed to give that report. And I also want to draw attention to the flood control district of the county, and one of the things in here, it says that the expenditures have been trending up. This is the county's uh, uh, flood control zone. They use it for all their water products, water projects, including those that affect Bellingham directly. Um, and the expenditures have been going up, especially since 2017, because of capital and water action plan projects. Current spending is depleting the reserve, which will be gone sometime in 2018. Um, and there are four levels of service that you describe in detail. I would call them fail badly, fail a little bit, barely meet standard, and actually do good. And actually do good would require the county to consider increasing its flood tax or some other funding mechanism. And I've been talking to county council members across the way, and several of them are very much aware of this and have been talking and have been encouraging their colleagues in the administration across the way to talk about increasing their funding mechanisms for stormwater projects, for flood projects, for Lake Whatcom water quality projects. Um, I briefly asked uh, Kelly, I think I'd like to have a presentation from the county as well as from our own city staff on water quality projects, capital projects, particularly long-term funding for Lake Whatcom and the viability of the county and the city's funding mechanisms. Um, does the, would the committee um, mind such a presentation, joint county and city, probably committee as a whole rather than Lake Whatcom, and it might not be for a month or two. There's no hurry on this. Is that okay? Yeah, I have no objection to that. Okay, I'll, I'll talk to colleagues across the way and, and coordinate with Kelly, and we'll, we'll see if we can put something together. Right. I mean, clearly, level of service four is where we want to be. It's just the two million dollar funding gap, and um, but that would provide for um, 
lake, additional uh, program uh, funding for Lake Whatcom programs. So that's ideally that's where we, we would be at. Um, any questions, comments from committee members? I guess just one comment relating to Michael's about the flood tax thing. In the past, this has been a kind of a big issue because everybody in the county, including all the residents of Bellingham, pay the flood tax. We got very little money ever back on projects relating to that. And as the idea of if you're using that, for Lake Whatcom is a great, is a good idea maybe, but there's no guarantee of them increasing that flood tax that it's going to be used for Lake Whatcom uh, projects with future. So I think for us, it would be more important to help them encourage like a uh, stormwater district like we bit the bullet and did for Lake Whatcom or something rather than go with the flood tax. Just a comment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, council members, any other comments, questions? Okay. Um, end of